बट आज आप मैनेजमेंट जोड़ाई रहा है आईसीआईसी लोमबार्ड मैनेजमेंट है ओवरओल रिजल्ट आगे के प्रोस्पेक्ट इंडस्ट्री में कंपनी में डेवलप थी रहा है आना विषय बातचीत कर अपनी साथ कंपनी सीएफओ और सीआरओ गोपाल बालचंद्रन जोड़ाई चुका है हाई सर थैंक्स वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग इन लेट मी स्टार्ट विथ एन ओवरओल पर्सपेक्टिव फॉर द इंडस्ट्री आई मीन गिवन द कंडीशन पास्ट वन इयर हेज बीन क्वाइट यू नो अ डिस्ट्रप्टिव काइंड ऑफ सीच्युएशन फॉर एवरी इंडस्ट्री barring the insurance industry insurance has been uh, able to clock in a growth in terms of overall uh, you know sentiment that has already dampened uh, can you give me a overall check in terms of how has this year been given the condition uh, that from here on things are a bit improving i agree that uh, we do have a, st- a second wave still uh, on us but still uh, a quick note on that highlights and then we'll uh, go to other parameters that have been impacting in overall your numbers as well good uh, yeah good afternoon aditi and uh, thanks for having me on the show uh, i think if you look at uh, the general insurance sector uh, not just this year if you were to look at the history of this sector since the time it was opened up to private uh, participation for the last 20 years the industry has been growing quite positively and that's largely to do with the level of penetration that you have seen in the non life insurance market india is still a significantly under penetrated market and in that backdrop is where you get to see the growth of the industry taking shape and if you look at the current year which that has gone by obviously as a sector we also had our own set of challenges uh, in terms of growth but having said that i think uh, companies which have been relatively better in terms of their balance sheet strength or when you look at their solvency position or in terms of profitable metrics clearly i think the preference of customers where to place their insurances with uh, those uh, set of quality companies and in terms of demand for insurance i think you can see that playing through across segments whether you take the commercial lines whether you see motor whether you see health all the three segments have kind of demonstrated uh, significant resilience when you look at the growth of the overall sector for the current year that's gone by and you are right aditi the overall industry clock uh, they they are they are back in the black with an overall industry growth of about 5.2% a large part of this growth was aided by the commercial lines of uh, insurances motor initial half obviously had its own set of challenges due to relatively uh, slower uh, vehicle sales in terms of new vehicle sales being bought uh, for insurance but since the time the activities were opened up for economic uh, space clearly we have seen resurgence coming back on new vehicle sales and hence even motor vehicle insurance have gathered momentum health understandably so this is a pandemic that impacts the health of everyone clearly we have seen pent up demand happening on that particular segment particularly towards quarter 2 of uh, last year and since then we have continued to see growth uh, being exhibited on the health portfolio as well so overall i uh, yes i think the industry has been uh, kind of been able to register growth in the black as i said with an overall growth of about 5.2% okay agreed sir before we go to results i also wanted to understand the way we are talking about the under penetration in indian markets i mean compared to global uh, you know players how is indian market shaping up i mean what kind of market size opportunity you are looking at for say next 2 to 3 years if you are talking about you know the curve that is still shaping up for uh, next growth parameters if you can give me a highlight on those terms because i have been uh, listening to quite analysts they are expecting a substantial growth in next 4 uh, to 5 years given this condition if we pass on covid condition what kind of amount uh, piece of amount growth that you are uh, you know kind of anticipating question aditi so let me before i kind of respond to what the future potential is if you look at the which is what i was talking about in my earlier response if you look at the last 20 years the industry has clocked a compounded growth rate of almost about 15 to 16% on an year on year basis this is for the last 20 year period and despite that when you look at the insurance penetration which gets measured by the contribution of the non life insurance sectors premiums as a percentage of gdp of the country Mm-hmm. that number for the indian market stands at about 0.94% now forget about comparison with some of the mm-hmm. developed markets even if you look at within the brick mm-hmm. country we are significantly under penetrated let's take the case of china china is at about 2% if you look at mm-hmm. brazil is at about 1.78% mm-hmm. look at uh, russia again they are far higher in terms mm-hmm. of penetration so 
on an aggregate when you look at the mm. extent of penetration that has happened in the non life insurance sector i think the demand for insurances not just in the past even as we look forward into the future we clearly see a possibility of continued growth of the sector even over the next i would say significant number of years that we could uh, talk about okay agreed sir uh, i wanted to start overall segment uh, with the segmental performances uh, you have clocked in i mean uh, about uh, motor insurance we'll discuss but prior to that health and travel because it has witnessed a quite a you know a big impact in terms of corona related disruption how is that shaping up if you can help me out with some of your strategies how are you going forward with it uh, what kind of planning uh, for next 2 to 3 quarters is shaping up some idea about that Absolutely. I think again, that's a good question to ask. Um, I think if you look at um, health specific, given that we are talking about that, but before I talk specifically on health, if you look at from an ICICI Lombard standpoint, I think the underlying theme that we have largely been driving the organization has been with respect to profitable growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what the theme that we have always advocated, mm-hmm. not just in the current environment, but even as a company, we have always looked for how we can drive profitable growth as, growth as a theme. across the lines of businesses whether it is the commercial lines whether it is motor or even for the matter of fact when you are talking about on the health side since we spoke about penetration mm-hmm. while i gave the numbers of the sector mm-hmm. on an aggregate basis at about 0.94% health specific when you look at uh, aditi mm-hmm. broadly there are three segments you have the uh, health insurance requirements that an individual or their family members will seek for themselves or their family or you will have a corporate who would take a coverage for their employees or for the matter of fact you also have the social insurance scheme which is largely kind of sponsored by the law <coughs> when you look at across these three segments clearly the opportunity that exists in so far as the potential of health insurance is concerned is immense and particularly when you look at individual insurance where person takes insurance for self or their family members the level of penetration of that particular category is just in a single digit number that shows the headroom that's available in so far as prospect of insurance is concerned and within that now when you look at it from an icc lombard standpoint we look at health insurance as one of our uh, preferred segments of opportunity and that's where we have been doing a lot of investments whether it is in the context of expanding distribution or for the matter of fact even when you look at making investments in technology and more importantly the third element where we are putting a lot of emphasis on is to build in excellence in claim service so across this three parameters is where we are putting a lot of our uh, investments in and just to kind of give an example when you look at the total number of um, agents that we work as a company uh, which also includes the point of sale distribution across the different uh, segments that number at the end of last financial year uh, march 21 was roughly about 59545 so this number when you look at maybe a year back the distribution touch points that we had was about 47000 touch points so clearly and the year before that we are we were at about 35000 so last couple of years we have been almost adding incremental 12000 agents who kind of um, source policies across different segments including health and health specific when you look at for the current year on the indemnity portfolio we actually saw a growth of almost about 22% now this 22% when you compare it with the previous year we had a growth of about 17% so clearly i think the opportunity that we see on the health insurance space is immense and as i said i think the investments that we have been doing is on expanding distribution which i spoke about the other aspect what we are doing essentially is use of technology now when you look at today health insurance typically people take a coverage for any form of hospitalization uh, uh, requirements that one may have i think from an icc lombard standpoint our thought process is of course we need to make available insurance for hospitalization but we are also looking at expanding the gamut to take care of every medical need that a person may have now that could include making a visit to a doctor if you want to order medicines through a pharmacy chain if you want any emergency assistance services now and multiple of such services is something that we were able are able to make it available today through the use of our our own created il take care app which enables health insurances to be offered across the spectrum of what a healthcare need that a customer may have so to answer your point health is definitely an area of preferred segment for us and that's something that we are investing in uh, significantly for growth 
Okay, that answers quite of my questions, sir. Uh, one more thing, in terms of uh, motor, uh, you know, the uh, segments that we are talking about. Uh, I was reading your investor presentation and the bifurcation about private car two wheelers and CVs. I wanted to understand in terms of CVs, how has their uh, the demand been shaping up? Because uh, with uh, quite a players I have been talking around and they do witness a kind of you know slump in that uh, parameters. But looking at your numbers, it has increased from FI 2020 to 2021. What kind of growth are you expecting uh, for motor insurance? If you can uh, help me out with that per se criteria good question again uh, Aditi but when you look at uh, uh, motor insurance yes you are right it broadly gets classified into those three segments of private car two wheeler and commercial vehicle insurances mm. but more importantly I think the way we mm. approach writing a motor portfolio is you will have to be nimble footed because the mm. underlying pricing environment could actually undertake different turns when you look at uh, in terms of private car or two wheelers or commercial vehicles and therefore, as a company, you should be in a position mm. to reorient your portfolio mix depending on what the operating environment at the ground mm. is. And that's where we have been able to significantly <coughs> reposition our portfolio from time mm. to time. What you saw as a mix of business for the year ended March 21 is private car was roughly about 56% or so. Two wheeler was roughly contributing to about 26-27%. And commercial vehicles, your observation is absolutely right. Mm relative to what we had kind of uh, contributed uh, of almost about 15 percent this year commercial vehicle has contributed to about 16 percent but the way but if you look at the overall market mix mm. of commercial vehicles industry would be roughly constituting commercial vehicle of almost about 40 45 percent thereabout so hence in terms of our approach mm. we generally write any segment with an element of caution uh, keeping in mind the underlying pricing environment and as you know on motor third party this is a segment which the regulator control, uh, mm. controls the pricing. They define the price at the end of at the beginning of mm. every year. And for the last couple of years, we haven't mm. seen any meaningful price change that has happened with respect to motor third party premiums. And hence, any portfolio mm. exposure that we take, including commercial vehicles, we always take a cautious approach in terms of increasing exposures therein. And so that's the approach that we have taken. And the current year, also had a set of challenge because in the initial couple of quarters we did not see so much of economic activities <coughs> taking place and hence the, uh, the the sale of new vehicles particularly on the commercial vehicle side was not as significant but as things started to open up we did see a significant pickup on let's say tractors for example where we have a substantially uh, almost one in four tractors is what is insured by icc lombard so clearly the focus for us is not just look at a particular segment, but the need is to kind of break down whether it is private car, two wheeler or commercial vehicles into multiple sub segments and see where do you have an opportunity to underwrite this. Okay. And uh, one more thing about a segmental bifurcation in terms of marine, if I'm not wrong last, uh, you know, from uh, one quarter, right, that is a uh, second half has been picking up for marine insurance space as well and SMA business. I mean, if I'm not wrong, it has been clocking around 35% growth this year also. How are things shaping up there? If you can highlight me uh, on those uh, matters, please. No, no, absolutely. Again, I think for us, uh, both the segments that you spoke about, Aditi, are again segments of uh, preferred growth. Mm. Uh, now, let me kind of talk about first on the SME mm. side. Um, SME as a segment for us mm. has been growing very well um, especially when you look at over the last not just this year that uh, the year that we are talking about but if you look at the last three four years every year we have been able to kind of grow the sme portfolio in excess of 30 percent uh, on an year on year basis and clearly we see a lot of potential to be able to grow that segment um, even as we look forward into the subsequent years the reason is i think one we have been again sme largely gets sourced through uh, small brokers and large agents and there, clearly, the thought process is the point that I spoke about on expanding distribution plays a very important role. So that's an area where we are investing in building uh, distribution. So that's one. The second thing that we did from an ICC Lombard standpoint on sourcing of SME policies is concerned. I think we were able to significantly digi digitize the way you will be able to source policies on the SME side. And today, I think when you look at the total number of SME policies that we write as a company from an ICC Lombard standpoint, 90% of those policies is something which is completely sourced on a digital format. So we don't see paper entering the office. In fact, the extent of manual interventions is as good as negligible. 
so that acts as a huge competitive advantage for us in terms of being able to uh, write continue to source sme policies in terms of the growth rate that i spoke about and when you look at sme it's not just one product segment it's across segments whether whether it is fire whether it is marine cargo whether it is um, uh, uh, liability whether it is group health to some extent um, engineering so the growth of the 30% what you see is contributed across product uh, segments and through multiple distribution channels through which uh, we source so the sme segment so that's one uh, the second segment that you spoke about on marine cargo is again a segment of focus for us uh, why and your point is absolutely right in the initial uh, quarters or so we did see challenges again largely linked with the economic activities that was happening on the ground and marine cargo is clearly a segment which reflects uh, or rather mirrors what's happening on the ground in terms of economic activities the in case if you see lower number of activities to that extent the number of transits on the ground tends to be limited and therefore the segment could have its own challenges uh, in so far as growth is concerned but yes once the uh, economic activity started to get resumed particularly towards quarter 3 and thereafter i think we were able to exhibit a significant level of growth now let me kind of talk about some of the numbers if you look at it on a full year basis the industry on the marine cargo actually had a degrowth of almost about 8.2% but if you look at it from an icsl onward standpoint i think we only had a degrowth of only about uh, 1.2% and this number when you look at it for the quarter that's quarter 4 the industry grew at a positive growth of about 10% icsl onward on the marine cargo portfolio had a positive growth of almost about 27% so clearly uh, similar to what i spoke about on the sme side marine cargo is an area of focus and we, and we believe there is a huge runway for growth even with respect to that particular segment is concerned hmm. okay uh, and lastly i wanted to understand uh, an update in terms of bharti xrs you know acquisition what kind of synergy benefits are we expecting from this merger and if i am not wrong uh, we are targeting about 8.7% market share post this you know a uh, complete process i mean we have been waiting to hear from your side what are the timelines what kind of benefits would uh, it yield if you can help me out with some of those data i mean you might have evaluated it uh, completely but uh, just some data if you can uh, share for my investors and my viewers sure i think again that's a fair question to ask uh, i think when we announced this transaction in august 2020 uh, at that point of time what we had indicated was uh, there are multiple factors that we are that we, that are gone into before evaluating this uh, transaction and uh, since it kind of check boxed most of the things that we would be looking at as a company and hence we were very keen to kind of do this particular transaction mm -hmm. having announced the transaction yes you are right uh, we were expecting various uh, synergies to come out of this transaction whether it is on the revenue side whether it is on the claim side or even for the matter of fact on the operating expenses as well now if you look at uh, the current state at which the transaction is uh, such type of transactions have to go through multiple regulatory clearances and over the last um, i would say uh, mm. uh, uh, several months uh, since the time we announced the transaction we were able to get clearances from the rbi we, we were able to get an in principle clearance from iidai we were able to get clearances from the stock exchanges mm. and very recently in quarter 4 our equity mm. shareholders also approved See, the transaction see. which was on february 23rd now the current state at which we are we allowed to finally uh, get clearances from nclt uh, that's the last step in the process of uh, so far as clearances is concerned on the nclt side and once nclt gives the clearance we will approach our principal regulator which is iidai for their final approval and thereby the scheme will become effective hmm. the expectation is that hopefully by quarter 1 uh subject to of course uh, regulatory approvals we expect this transaction to get uh, become uh, effective that's where we are in so far as uh, the transaction update is concerned and till that point of time we continue to be operating as uh, independent companies having said that to the extent what is allowed by regulation we have already initiated the process of uh, planning for integration and to that extent we have already engaged external consultants both who will assist us on determining uh, mm. integration from the business and we have also engaged consultants who will be able mm. to help us on the people integration as well so all in all i think uh, mm. things are going on the right track and in fact the time period within which some of these approvals have come relative to what we had expected we are almost 2 3 mm. months ahead of what we would have uh, normally uh, 
expected on the approvals to come through. Mm. So your point on that 8.7 percent, that's more on a pro forma basis, because if you look at uh, when we announced the transactions in August mm. 2020, at that point of time we had the March 2020 numbers. So we had a market share of about 7 percent. Bharti mm. XI had a market share of about 1.7 percent. Mm. So on a pro forma basis, it's an 8.7 percent mm. market share. The attempt will be once the transaction becomes mm. effective, within the next two years thereafter. We would want this transaction to become incrementally EPS accretive. That's the thought process that we have in terms of how we are mm -hmm. looking at uh, synergies coming out of this transaction. 